I ask you to uh, turn to your Bible, Mark chapter 1. The title of this message, The Plan to Pray. And as I shared with you earlier in our announcement is this week, the sanctuary is going to be unlocked at 6 in the morning. If Brad will wake up a little earlier, it'll be a little sooner too. Just We can't count on that, but we're going to hope. You know, always pray about that. And, and, but it's not going to be locked until 9 o'clock at night. And I encourage you to develop a plan to come here and pray for our heaven's gates. Pray that God will use it in a great way than he's ever has before. We've seen over the past two years God do great things through heaven's gate. But I got news for you. I don't want to settle for what we've seen. I want to see something I've not seen before. We have to focus on something even greater and something even larger than human understanding. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, And rise very early in the morning, while it, is still, while it was still dark, he departed, went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Our text has given to us much help through the example of Jesus Christ. And there's going to be four things that I want you to note that happens in this one verse. Now, for some of you, I probably lost you at the very moment it says they got up early. You probably just tuned me out and said, uh, I'm not even awake yet. And you're probably going to let us roll over and go on to sleep now. But I'm going to beg you and plead with you, please wake up. Please do not lose what the Lord is going to show us in this passage. The first thing I want you to notice here in this verse is the person who prayed. If you'll notice there in that verse, it has the word, he prayed. He prayed. He meaning Jesus. He meaning our Savior. Now, I have a question to ask you is, he needed to pray. Do you think that we need much more prayer? Do you think that you need to pray even more than Jesus himself? Jesus himself was God in flesh. And he saw an important need to go and pray. I got news for you. If it was important to him and to go and pray that us as feeble human beings, simple human beings, it is very important that we pray. Amen. Prayer is very vital. I can give you story and illustration after story and illustration, one after another, until you're tired of hearing them about the power and, and the, the might of prayer. I have seen God do some great things. And there are some of you that have been around here a little longer than I have. I won't start naming names like Miss Dally and, 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 and you know, uh, Snowball and Buster. You know, we, we got some old people here. And you in your old age and your years of experience, you probably saw even greater things than me. But we cannot put a limit in age of seeing greatness. And let me tell you, prayer is very vital. And I want you to catch that it was vital for Jesus to pray. The second thing is I want you to see the passion for prayer. It said it was still dark and he departed. Getting up in the early morning takes a lot of effort. Prior to me breaking my elbow a, a, a while back and um, some other things happening. I would get up at 4 o'clock and, and we lived down in Taylor. And, and I would get on my bike and I would leave before the sun even came up. And I would come up Taylor Road because I knew the traffic wouldn't be light. There was four cars that would pass me every morning. I knew they were coming into work. Some way or another I was praying they hadn't been drinking and they would see me. And they would go around me and go on. And I would go and I would ride out to Sardis. I would ride, you know, wherever it was I was trying to get to, to get my loop in and get back before the traffic got heavy. I got news for you. It was awful hard when you woke up and you're like, man, I could keep sleeping. But then when I would make myself get up, go get on the bike, and when I would get home, I'd feel so much better. 
but that's just a physical thing. When you and I are willing to dedicate and sacrifice sleep, sacrifice rest, that is an effort to get up and go pray. To get up extra early even takes more effort. Now, I may meddle here in just a minute with some of us. Sad thing is, some of us may set our alarm clock a little early before we got to get to work, so we got enough time to go and get on Facebook and go and catch up on the gossip of the day or what the gossip happened the night before, what's going to happen that day. I got news for you. Facebook is nothing but gossip. It is what it is. And here it is. We're willing to sacrifice a little rest and sleep to catch up on the gossip. But we're very hesitant to sacrifice a little sleep to talk to the Savior, to talk to God Almighty. We're willing to do it for physical stuff. We're willing to do it for things that we can hear, we can see, we can touch. But we're not willing to be passionate about prayer. And the thing is, as you notice here, that, that he was passionate. You might have to get up early to go pray, but you will learn that it always takes much more effort to do that. And if you're unwilling to put out the energy to get up and go pray, I got news for you. You won't do it. If you're not willing to sacrifice and put forth a little bit of effort to get up and go pray, it's just not going to happen. You're just not going to do it. Because the things of life, the things of the day, will take so much priority in your life, you just won't make time to pray. We put out energy, we get and, and a great effort in many areas of our life. You know, we'll put out effort to get up and go to work because we need to make money and pay the bills, take care of family. That's great. But it's sad that we'll put, more, put forth much more effort to seek things of the world than we do to seek things of God. But seldom do we put forth that effort for spiritual matters. And you realize that because us in a society we're willing to sacrifice for spiritual matters and we wonder why our society is so spiritually deprived. Because our society and even us have more of a passion to seek the things around us than we do to seek the things of spiritual matters. And that's a sad thing. But Jesus shows us that he had a passion to pray. Do you realize that when Jesus, he touched people, he healed people, he, he taught with people, he saw people's lives changed, he, he invested in people's lives day in and day out. And I'm going to tell you, he loved that. He was a passion about, he, he cared about them. But he was much more passionate about prayer than he even was doing ministry because his main ministry was talking to his father. The third thing that I want you to notice here, the priority of prayer. The same part here, it, it says it, it was still dark and he departed. The priority of prayer, it shows a great priority for a prayer in his life, that he got up and he went. Praying early in the morning doesn't mean we can't pray at the end of the day or pray any other time. Now, there's some of us that we, we just, it, it's just not going to work, that early morning prayer. And if, if it ain't, then okay. Can you pray another time during the day? Yeah. But the thing is, is you have to put forth that effort to say, okay, I'm going to pray later in the morning. I'm going to pray in the afternoon. I, I'm going to pray at night. Here's the thing. If you're willing and, and, and to pray, and you're like, I, I just can't do the morning prayer. Just can't do it. It, it. I'm going to fail. And you already know you're going to fail. 
But you can say, I'm willing to pray at another time of the day. Question. Will you be willing to sacrifice and guard that time? Let's just throw out a number. Let's say you're going to pray at 8 o'clock at night. And 8 o'clock at night is going to be your prayer time, your devotion time with the Lord each day. Are you willing to guard it when your favorite TV show's on? Are you able to guard it when someone calls? Are you able to guard it when the text messages are going off? Are you going to be willing to guard it when there's all kind of stuff going on on Facebook? Or are you willing to guard it that no matter what distractions of the world that are happening, at 8 o'clock, you and the Lord are going to be talking. You and the Lord are going to be in, in, in the Bible studying and growing in your relationship with God. You see... Many times when we look at this verse, we emphasize the word morning. And that is a great time to do it. Once you start your day with that time with God, you don't have to worry about the, the hectness or, or, or the distractions of the day stealing that time from you because you've already taken it. But I understand there are people that it's just not going to happen with. And here's the thing. If you're going to pray in the evening or whatever time that you're willing to sacrifice at bedtime, you know, say, say you go to bed at 10 o'clock. Well, 10 o'clock, that's going to be your quiet time, and then you'll go to bed afterwards. Here's the thing. You've got to guard it. That's the part that is important to the Lord, that that time is such a priority, no matter what, you're going to protect it, no matter what. It becomes a priority in your life. The thing is, rather that we, we notice here is that the priority is such important. And the priority in your life will reveal the spirituality. If you're willing to allow it to be priority, you're going to notice your relationship with God growing. You're putting spiritual matters first in your life. You're guarding those spiritual matters. Christ play, prays, placed high priority in prayer. Are you? That tells that prayer is very important. Spiritual activity around us. Do you want to be effective for God? Do you want to be used by God? Here's the thing. You got to spend time with him. You got to allow him to speak to your heart so that you understand what it is to do. There's times we can do good deeds. We can do good physical actions to people. We can love people at times. But here's the thing to know and be obedient to God, it has to come from spending time with him. And when we're willing to do that, it changes the priorities in our life and it allows us to grow spiritually. The fourth thing I want you to notice, and it's the last thing, the place of prayer. It says in this verse, it says he went to a desolate place. Some versions of the Bible says a solitary place. And, and here's the thing. He had a designated spot that he was to go and pray. And, and my mentor, when I was going through college, that, that God used this man to pour into my life and to disciple me. And, and he was teaching me and my roommate uh, about quiet time and, and making it important and a priority in our life. He said, he said guys, he said, this is what you've got to do. He said, you've got to have your spot. I thought, what do you mean, your spot? He said, man, he said, you, you got to have a, he said, it's best you got a little table. He said, be your dining room table, whatever, but that you got a table. I said, why, why has it got to have a table? Why can't I do it in my recliner? He said, no, no, you got to have a table. He said, because you got to be ready in case the Lord's speaking and you need to write. He said, you need to have a place at your Bible that no matter where or what, your Bible is always in that spot. And he said, next thing you got to have is something to write on, and you got to have a pen. He said, have it always together. You're saying, well, why? 
Here's why. Have you ever been, someone call you or sometime or another and you need to write something down and you can't ever find nothing to write on? Uh-huh. How many times you had the paper to write on but you couldn't find nothing to write with? It happens at my house all the time. We have a drawer full of pens. Guess what? Every time I pull them out, none of them write. Guess what I do? I put them back in the drawer. I don't know why. They need to go in the garbage. But we got a drawer full of them, not one of them right. Here's the thing. You see, the time it takes to go and find your, your notebook or time to go and find the pen to write with, you just distracted and you just took away your time with God. But if you got your Bible, you got your notebook, and you got your pen always there together, when God speaks, you can write. And you already got it to write with. You got it to mark in your Bible when things that God shows. What I do is I have my Bible, my notebook, my pens, and my markers all in one in a, in a case, and I keep it all the way zipped up together. Then when I'm ready to, to get into it, I unzip it, and it's all right there. Here's the thing. You have to have your place to pray. And we can pray when we're alone and we're not busy in a public place. But, but the thing is, we can pray when we're, we're in the closet, the Bible says, and we can pray when we're in a public setting. But, but that priority, that, that place of prayer, that place of, uh, of, of that quality time is when it's you and God. When you and your spouse or you and someone you may be dating, when it's just you and them, you're spending quality time together. You're able to learn about one another. It's precious. It's special. And the thing is, is it needs to be that way with God. That, that it becomes quality time. It becomes special. But you have that place to go. Some of you may have that favorite restaurant that you go to or that, that favorite thing that you go and do together. Well, the thing is, is you and God have your meeting place. And the thing is, is it makes it very special. But in spite of the fact that we can pray anywhere, it's still a good thing to have that special prayer time every day with God in that solitary place, that place that, that is just you and God that's quiet. And, and it gives you a time to have that private prayer with God and not allow the heckness to take your eyes off. And here's the thing in closing. But if you're interested in spending time with the Lord, you'll find a place. If you really are interested in starting to set up this quality time with God, you'll do it. If you're like, well, Wes, that was a good little talk. That's a good little verse. Good job. And you walk out those doors and... Before you get to your car, you forget it. You ain't going to do it. It's not going to happen. But if you actually have a desire and a passion to do it, you will do it. But here's a side note. Satan is going to do everything in his power to keep you from doing it. He's going to steal your time. He's going to steal your focus. You and your spouse may get into some arguments and the last thing you want to do is pray or, or go and read your Bible and that's really the first thing you need to go do. Your friends or somebody's going to hurt your feelings or you are going to get out of line with something or, or you, you, you may hurt your leg or your, your tailbone or, or some ribs. But here's the thing. Obstacles are going to happen. But the thing is, is if Spending time with God is our priority. You're going to make time for it. Why don't you, if you haven't started this yet, say, Wes, I've tried, but I quit. Just be real with me. Wes, I don't do it on a regular basis. What about today? Start again. But this time, no matter what, you never stop. What about you allow it to become the main priority and the passion of your life? Spending time with the Father. Let's pray. Lord God.